and I come to help take their way. Uh, today we want to do a very important video which says uh, how to calculate uh, the power output of your transformer and I will be centralizing it on this particular transistor we will be using two SC1943 let me write it down so that you can get it uh, we will use this type of uh, transistor for high power transistor not all this loop I have with it so it's very common for heavy gadget so let me this is the name two SA1943 right the second one is two SC1943 52 okay so those are the uh, transistor type we're using we are not building but we want to look at how to calculate the power output because it can be funny sometimes when some people put two or three of it together or four and you'll be hearing this is 2000 watt power amplifier 4000 5000 it can be very funny okay so let's look at it today let's look at it from a very professional angle because when we look at amplifier building uh, and we look at the power output you don't just assume numbers and there are some factors that really determine the first one that determines is your power is your power supply your power supply it really matters your power supply then another thing that determines is the load the speaker you are using is it 8 ohms is it 16 ohms is it 4 ohms so it determines the weight the amplifier will really behave because for example if my amplifier is powering this the power output will be different from when it's carrying this or this. You understand now for 8 ohms now my power will drop. For example if I'm getting like 200 watt if I'm using this I can get like 300 plus. You understand now? So let's look at it. I will teach you how to do the calculation yourself. So that when you build a, a, a the amplifier let's say you use 2. You can be able to know that okay this is the minimum and this is the continuous power supply i can get from this because we have what we call the continuous power and we have the peak power uh the peak power is good but it's not really realistic because uh at some point you can get distortion and rumbling and the rest but when we look at the continuous power those are the points where your amplifier will perform successfully without misbehaving or fluctuating so that is the safe one so we'll look at it as the good point of it so it's very simple this is the formula we'll be using so if this sounds like something that really interests you do me a favor like this video if you've not subscribed subscribe so let's look at it today so uh, look at the formula this is the formula we'll be using uh, this is p out the p out stand from the power output you understand why this is v supply that is your voltage that is being supplied into your transformer and uh, into your amplifier that is the one that is coming from your transformer you know it will flow through the diode and through the capacitor where it will be rectified uh, it will be well filtered you know the rectification is being done from the uh the diode you understand huh? why the trans um, the capacitor filter to make this sound more on um, the output more smoothening so the output you are getting from there is what we call the voltage supply then we have the voltage load at some point there will be some form of power loss across each uh, across the transistors usually it's usually between 5 and 8 voltage maximum you understand now huh? so at times 10 let's just say 10 but uh, the standard is between 5 and 8 volt loss you understand so that is voltage loss and this is 2 R load. The two R load means the ohms of your speaker. You know, some of our speakers have been rated at eight ohms. Why some four? Why some sixteen? But sixteens are not common in game. It's usually either eight ohms or four ohm. So we'll do the calculation together today. We'll do it today. So I'm sure you watch this video to the end. So uh, and also there is another thing to note is efficiency factor. Uh, based on the kind of preboard you use. Uh, we we'll call them class a b if you're using class a b the efficiency is usually between 60 to 70 percent but to just be on average we just pick the middle point which is 65 percent if you are using a b d and the rest it will vary but let's use a b let's assume we're using a very good preboard to drive it okay so let's start with the transform mm, the calculation there so under an id condition if you are using 2sc5200 or 2s say 2sc1943 that one each of these transistors they have the same property the good thing is uh they can handle up to 230 volts maximum this is their maximum voltage you can put apply anything above that you damage it then they can handle 15 amps of current so if your transformer is performing is transferring like uh 10 amps with 5 amps 10 it's successful but if you start using 20 amps 30 amps you'll burn it you understand now so that is the ampere they can handle the current of 15 amps 
and the maximum voltage of 230 volts but most time we don't get to that extent we will usually use uh, 30 uh, uh, sometimes we use 30 0 30 uh, that is center plus minus I see something like this 30 center 30 okay why sometimes we use 50 but personally if I'm building a very heavy arm that has a very rugged need then I use between 60 70 maximum 80 I don't go to 100 and go because you have to give room for headroom in case there is distortion you understand so it will be able to handle it because if you are using 100 100 0 100 and by the time you combine it that is what that is 200 I remember sometimes when the voltage input that is coming through the primary side of your transformer is very high you know it will tend to supply more output too so definitely at some point you will exceed this so to give room to that at times we use just 30 0 30 if it is a basic amplifier some 40 some 50 but if you are using 50 60 and the rest is still safe so let's assume I'm using 60 0 60 now that will give me 60 plus 60 that is 120 so I'm still safe so there is no way I would damage this yet everything will be very very okay then another thing is your heat dissipation your that is the heat zinc you are using it matters to the dissipation it matters a lot if there is and also ventilation you know when you eat you use your heat sink because this transistor you attach it to the heat sink now this is a very small i'm just using it as a sample this is not the heat sink we use we use a very big one okay but let's just assume you know this one is to help with the cooling process and you have fun in the amplifier too, okay so this factor really matters a lot so let's dive into the calculation so the formula we'll be using says p out uh let me Please pay attention here. P out is equals to voltage supply. I already explained the meaning of voltage supply to you. If you've not, if you don't know the meaning, just back this video a few minutes back. Then V loss. Then everything square all over two R load. Now, remember this is your voltage out. That is the power output you will get at the end of the day. You understand, huh? So. Uh, remember voltage supply now if you look at the voltage that is what is coming from your transformer what is our voltage supply so let's assume our voltage supply is 40 0 40 you understand and that is voltage supply will now be uh, you know the way an amplifier work especially this high definition one we used to have the plus side and the negative side and the center you understand so this is the side this is another side that will go to the uh, the diode you understand four leg diode you know two side will be you know this one will go to the ac side why this will come to the uh the port dc side you understand the output now one will now be positive before it gets to the capacitor if you don't understand what i'm saying check my playlist i've done enough video on that okay so this is our v supply now so our v supply remember we are 40 here we are 40 that is 40 times 2 that is 80 volts exactly now now let's look at the voltage loss. Uh, the voltage loss I say is usually between voltage loss is usually between five and eight. But let's calculate for the worst. Let's use eight volt. Is that clear now? Let's use eight volt. So if you are using eight volt, then this is the hard load. That is the ohms of your core, of your speakers. You understand now? Huh? So let's assume we are using ohm eight ohms now. You can do the calculation for that of four ohms no problem that's not a problem so the voltage we are using now is 40 so that it's 40 times 2 because of two side it has so it's giving us 80 80 volts let me zoom out a bit so you see further so that is giving us 80 volts now so let's apply that to our formula now p out so our p out now will be our voltage supply what is our voltage supply is 80 volts so that is 80 minus what is this v loss we are using we use the peak one which is eight foot so we are using eight now then the square here all over uh, this is two times what is our hard load that is uh what is so called that will be um yeah hard load is eight okay so that our p out will definitely now be this is 80 minus eight that will be 72 that will be 72 so if this is 72 so i'll do 72 square all over this is two times eight that will give me 16. if you have your calculator there if you punch it out if you do if you do the square this simply means 72 times 72 divided by 16. so your answer should be 3 
24 watt you get what i'm saying now this should be 324 watt so that is i'm using uh, for, for i'm using a 40 volt that is the two side which give me 80 volt and my voltage loss is eight i'm using it and my load is eight do you understand now so if i subtract this that is giving me 72 if i square it and you divide this it will give you 324 watts I believe you fully understand what we are doing right now. It's very, very simple, like A, B, C. Exactly. <laughs> so now, remember, uh, provided all these factors uh, are being met, the power supply, the load, the heat dissipation, and the rest are being met, that is, under a normal uh, condition, we'll get all this. Then, um, this is the power out we've gotten this. Then, you, the last stage is to calculate your efficiency efficiency for class a b is usually uh, 60 to 70 percent but let's just use 65 percent efficiency so 65 percent simply means 65 all over 100 times what you got here that is three two four watts so if you do your math and the rest you see that you are going to get 210 watts rms that is root mean square so this is your power this is the power that this particular amplifier will give you so if i'm using a 40 uh, 40 40 40 0, 40 that is center positive uh, transformer um, and the voted lot is this and this is a load i will get a 210 watt rms why the reason is because of the efficiency it should have been three to four but you know when we look at the efficiency in the process of producing you know over the if you notice your amplifier sometimes you see that when you start a particular section sometimes you see the volume will be very very loud it will be sounding very heavy but at some point some of them you see the output is dropping gradually a bit you understand why it's because in the process of uh, amplification the transistor will get out and especially if your heat zinc is not functioning well or you don't have enough room for ventilation by adding fans and the rest if there is no room for that it will eat and in the process of that there will be power loss you understand that? but even though there is power loss and, and the rest for this particular one the worst case you can get is 210 watts do you understand now so this is what it ought to be but due to the efficiency so we've considered the power dissipation and the rest so you still get 210 watt so if you follow that calculation if you calculate it for assuming it's four ohms that will be 72 square all over 16 if you calculate it it will give you six because that is like times two of this that should be six four eight watt so if you use it to multiply this so that should give you like 300 watt rms I believe you understand this now so that is how to do the calculation to know so in case if your voltage supply is high then you know for example let's say i'm using 50 then that will be 50 times 2 that is 100 so that would have been 100 minus this say that would be 92 I get my square so that one will generate more power compared to that of just 40 so if i'm using 30 you know it will drop so that is so not just all about the transistor because you can use many transistor and still yet it will not drive away why because there is not enough power to drive it and sometimes there is too much loss in the process of uh, of it because you do not provide enough of, uh, enough heat zinc some of you you use a very small heat zinc you attach like a transformer there and you know that each one will generate it so in the process this one generate this one generate everything will be hot the the heat zinc is not sufficient to cool it down and you don't even have some fun so that is what you consider so the main what it comes from your uh is it, it depends on the transistor the transformer and the its dissipation do you understand and so not just about jump packing everything where some of you will use 10 transistor 16 transistor and you'll be using just maybe like 30 0 30 transformer and also the current really matters too because each one of these can undo up to 15 so let's say i'm driving with a 40 0 40 transformer and it has 10 amps it will drive compared to me driving with with just five amps the power output will be different what it will give me would really differ so i believe you got some value from this video if you want me to do more no problem see
just drop it in the comment section and ensure you like this video subscribe see you guys in my next video cheers